gentlemen, boys and girls, how are you all doing today? So today, yesterday, we did an M44 uh, review, uh, Tier 6 American Artillery, and today we are going to do a Tier 10 Conquer Gun Carriage uh, Tier 10 Artillery uh, review. Uh, I've never done one on this, uh, mainly because I really don't like artillery, <laughs> but uh, I've been playing an awful lot of it lately, trying to get the Object 260 missions done. Uh, this is a very hard hitter, and... Um, well, let's go over it, and we'll just kind of talk about it for a second, and then we'll do a replay for you and go over the uh, post-game stats and call it good. So anyways, the gun on this thing uh, is your Magic Maker. Uh, I'm not going to go over the stock stats. Uh, average penetration is 59. Uh, the uh, What they did to the uh, shells are just makes you want to cry. Um, you know, it took away your AP rounds, but oh well. So... Your average damage per minute is 1,200 rounds, or excuse me, average damage per hit is 1,200. But like I said yesterday in that uh, M44 review, take that number and cut it in half. If you hit a direct hit, that's about what you're going to hit them for. Uh, your average damage per minute, we won't go over that. Uh, minimum stun duration is 14.85 seconds. Maximum stun is 33 seconds. Uh, dispersion is 1.08, so very, very inaccurate. But it makes up for it with the... Uh, um, the stun area that it can stun. Uh, we'll skip over to my stats because mine are actually a lot better than the stock. Uh, okay, so uh, my rate of fire is 1.61 rounds a minute. My reload is 37.17 seconds. Gun traverse is 9.8 uh, seconds, which is slow. And uh, traverse of the actual tank destroyer circling around. I'm sorry not tank destroyer, artillery, is 26.73. So it's pretty slow spinning. So uh, one of the good things I'm going to have to add to this is that clutch braking. That way you can help spin her around a little bit quicker. And where are we at here? Uh, gun depression is zero. Basically right there is your, uh, as low as you can go. And elevation is 45. Uh, gun traverse limits is 30 and 30, which is really nice. As you can see, it's got this kind of a turret and you can spin it basically all the way to the left and right to the uh, limits of where your gun's going to hit right there and the side right there aim time is 4.98 seconds so it's got a pretty good aim time dispersion the stock sucks so mine at 0.97 is really nice average damage per minute for mine is 1937 what a great year you get 530 hit points, and this is where a lot of people don't think about this, but you actually have good armor on this. In the front, you have 130. So if somebody shoots you in your lower plate, upper plate, a lot of times you'll bounce rounds if they hit your hull. Uh, if they hit you up here, forget it. You're getting penned. <laughs> on the side, you got 50, and the rear, you got 76, and it is a big target. 55.8 uh, tons, so it's pretty heavy. Engine horsepower is 891. Specific power to weight is 15.97, so it'll scoot right along. Not, it's not like a medium or a light tank, but it'll it'll move. Top speed is 34.3. Weird, weird number. Why don't they just go 35 or 34? But 34.3, whatever. In forward, in 10 and reverse. Concealment sucks at 9.28, and that's because it is so big. Uh, I also did go with vents, gun lane drive, and a rammer. Um, I didn't go with a uh, camo net uh, just due to the fact that I don't think even with a camo net is going to help that concealment enough. Uh, and, and you need vents. You need these three. The aim time, get everything down for you number-wise. View range is only 314, and that's if you're obviously spotting for yourself. And signal range is 798. Uh, is it worth it? Oh, hell yeah. If you like artillery, uh, this thing, it's got a monster boom. Uh, your standard round has a 12.8 burst radius, and your premium round has a 14.2 meter uh, burst radius. So it's got a uh, small, you know, well, not smaller. It's got the, the small size or standard round and then the bigger round. It, it, it's got a heck of a boom. So, uh, yeah. So if you want to hold on for a minute, we will have some gameplay for you in this post-game stat. So I will be right back. Alrighty, I said I was going to see if I had that replay where I got my bombardier, and I did. 
Um, still had it in there, so the uh, T30 has 426 health, and the Object 430 has 277 health. And this is where you want to kind of aim in between them, and hopefully you splash them both for a nice chunk. And get it back to its normal speed, and boom! Took both them rascals out with one shot. Actually had it in one fast, uh, faster speed than I should have, but basically, uh, end, end game, same result. We end up taking out uh, two uh, very dangerous guns with one shot. And that's kind of what they're leaning towards, I think, with artillery is it's uh, got a bigger, uh, excuse me, bigger area that it damages, and, um, you know, that's what they're leaning towards is that you're not shooting at a single target. You know, you're shooting at multiple targets if there is multiple targets to hit. Um, whereas it used to be uh, the way it was set up, you would basically... Um, aim in on, you know, one target. I think I think I hit and finish him off. Yeah. Um, it, it used to be you would actually aim in on one target, and you know, all your your blunt of damage or blunt brunt of damage would go on that one vehicle. Now the way it's set up, um, what you want to do is aim at you know an area where there's multiple tanks and uh, splash that uh, that whole area so you do an area of damage not just um, you know uh, one direct area of damage now this little guy was coming at me and uh, we end up hitting him for a good chunk yeah half his health is gone well almost half his health but I was gonna try ramming him but unfortunately, he gets me taken out. He gets taken out by a 183 rate when he finishes me off, though. Kabloom. But we end up winning that match. But yeah, so I just wanted to throw that in there to show you my uh, second Bombardier, the one that I got. I've been playing this game since it came out. So over nine years I've been playing it, almost ten years. Uh, and that was my second Bombardier. So anyways, yeah, if you want to hold on for a minute, I will have an act the actual uh, replay that I wanted to show you. Uh, but I just want to toss this one in there. So, hold on, I'll be right back. Alrighty, so here we are in Redshire in the Tier 10 gun carriage. Or Conquer gun carriage. Uh, it is probably, I'd say, well, t 92s up there. Uh, it's got a, the t 92 is a little more accurate. I think it's got a little faster load time and it got a little bit bigger boomstick. But this thing, you can, uh, because of the arc that it has, you can lob shells in areas where other artilleries can't even think about touching. The problem, and I'm going to show you that you run into, is the range of this because of the arc. I mean, literally, you're looking at like a round that goes up and then straight back down, where most of your arties don't have an arc that are like that. They're more like this and it goes like that. Or kind of like that. We can swim. <laughs> so you can see it's white. I can't hit in there. That's the problem you run into. That's my maximum range from here. Um, artillery likes to go in this little spot right here. And for the life of me, I was going to move forward to see if I could get into where I could hit in there. And I move forward. I aim in that area again. Well, I saw that T-49. I think I take a shot at him first. Yeah, I do. I take a shot at him. He keeps taking the same route, and that's the mistake he, he was making. Unfortunately, we just lost, I think it was our RU-251. Let's do this real quick. Yeah, our, our, we just lost our eyes, so which kind of sucked. But, see again, I tried aiming up in there, and it still does not have the range to get up there. Um, so, you lose range, but... The arc on this is so good that literally you can put rounds in places. People are like, oh, he's got to be cheating. What? He's got to be using some mod that, you know, there's just no way. How did he hit me there? Because it's just, well, we splashed him for 66. He turned just as I pulled the trigger, so uh, it didn't do a lot of damage to him there. But it did uh, scare the pee out of him because you can see now he's changing his route and going up the water. And uh, somebody plugged him right there for 376 after we stunned him. So now we're going to start. It, oh, and hills. This thing it works 
wonders when you're shooting uh, on hills because normally uh, you can't hit uh, tanks uh, if they're sitting on the side of a hill where this the gun arc is so good you're able to pull shots off that normally you can so I pulled the trigger there anyways which ended up being a waste I think it might have splashed him for a real just a little bit but nothing to uh, go yay <laughs> but shells like uh, this area here I end up targeting that area and I was gonna lob a shell in there but then I saw a tank destroyer pull up in uh, behind the E75 and stuff but right in there normally like with uh, your T92 you can't put a shell in that area where this one if I would have fired at the AMX M49 and I would have probably splashed all three of them but I saw that Yak Tiger come lumbering over the hill and I thought you know let's give him a little love tap so we it didn't even hit him. I mean, that round hit way back here, and we still splashed him for two, almost 200. And right now he's stunned, and he's just getting just drilled. So now he's down to two hit points. I saw that uh, Jagdpanzer IV, and I thought, you know, just all I got to do is hit near him, and I'm going to do a lot of damage because that thing has absolutely no armor. Now, if he would have sat there and just stayed right there, I would have killed him. But he moves. So now you got to start thinking, okay, where is he going to move to? Is, is he going to stay lit? Is, and then he stopped. Now, if he would have kept moving, I would have definitely killed him. Yeah, we splashed him for 210 um, and left him with 210. That's kind of weird. Um, but, yeah, if he would have kept moving, he would have literally drove right into my shell. That's the thing with artillery is, for one, you always want to mark your areas. And I do. You're going to see a, a shot I take in a little bit. And an enemy tank is just pounding the crap out of one of our tanks I'm not, I can't remember which one it's gonna happen here in a little bit and it's in this area here so he's just drilling one of our tanks I marked the area and I'm like dude I marked the area because I want to shoot there to help you I think it's the boss actually and he's to instead of trying to get out of there and they know that you've marked that area I mean they're seeing exactly what you're seeing so I marked the area. This is saying, hey, you know, dude, I'm going to try helping you out. I'm going to blob a shell at that tiger, too. So I mark it. You'll see the thing come around. Instead of the moss backing up, I can't. I'm not going to shoot. And once I'm that close to a moss, I'll do more damage to the moss than I probably will the tiger, too. Because of where it's at. So I can't pull the trigger. And the moss, I'm like, just back up, dude. And he's going forward. I'm like, oh, now I can shoot. So I just did 811, well, 476. Somebody else must have hit him at the same exact time. So I did 476 damage to a, for a direct hit on the Tiger too. But I couldn't help the Moss because I marked the area and he did not back off. You, If you want to help your artillery out, two things you can do. One, try and make sure that you can keep enemies lit. I mean, don't if you're down to 100 hit points, obviously... Don't stick your nose out there and get lit up and get taken out by the enemy artillery or, you know, whatever, um, or get hit and, and get taken out. But if you've got a, a decent amount of uh, hit points and you're in an area that you know that you're already safe and you can poke out and light, like right now, I have nothing to shoot at. I'm loaded and have literally nothing to shoot at. Well, that T-49 lit up over here, but I figured he was going to be dead here because of what we, we had tanks over there so I'm just sitting here da 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 I'm, I'm and I'm hitting my uh, th three buttons saying ready to fire ready to fire aiming here ready to fire no one's lighting anything so here in a second I actually type um, need targets so finally the 50B gets lit up and this is where you got to kind of put yourself in their shoes guess where they're gonna go if they go invisible and uh, drop around on them but he kept backing up and he was so close to dying he only had I didn't even show it down here uh, I did hit him I did finish him off I think he had 160 150 some hit points left um, but it was considered a blind shot for whatever reason um, so yeah you'll see the post game stats the damage I did on him so I know there's probably some tanks up here where they were last spotted and uh, I don't know what's that. Anyways, um, 
but this is the worst feeling is when you're loaded and you're doing nothing you're just sitting here you have nothing to shoot at and every time i get loaded i hit the three key that's saying i'm loaded um and that i've got one in the chamber that way my team knows i'm lit and i was going to take a shot at this per uh projecto but somebody else took him out and then i saw artillery and he was nice just to back up sit there and let me aim in on him i'm like how did my game freeze up he's just he's not moving why is he not moving well if he's not going to move he's still sitting there let's go ahead and drop one on his head so he basically got double tapped and i would have rather shot the tiger too because he had more health and he was a bigger threat because that artillery i think was just uh loading anyways uh like that artillery right back there there's no way in god's green earth i had the range to even hit him so yeah that's the biggest thing you can do for your team uh or your artilleries is one try and keep targets lit uh you know so that you have things to shoot at and two when they mark an area if you're in that area get out because they're probably trying to help you just like with that moss i could not shoot because the simple fact was if i would have i would have splashed him and probably killed him or done a substantial amount of damage to him trying to save him but if he would have just backed out of the area instead of pulling forward into the area then i would have say about 99 percent chance that um yeah, look how far that round was way back here, and I still splashed him for 124. But, um, yeah, if he would have backed off instead of pulling forward, you know, because I lit an area up, and he pulled forward into that area instead of backing up. If he would have backed up, I could have probably helped him and saved him uh, from getting killed. So now the Tiger II just takes out our Pershing, and this is where you put yourself in to i paused it so don't think oh my god he stopped uh this is where you put yourself into that player's shoes what's he gonna do when he goes invisible is he gonna set behind this rock is he gonna stop in the back up uh, you know try and fool uh the artillery or is he going to uh keep curves along this little road right here for you to possibly knock out so out of the options i had i just felt like he's got these guys coming up behind him, more than likely he's going to try getting out of there, so he's just going to book down this way. So I go ahead and, when he goes invisible, aim where I think, you know, I'm not loaded yet. So I'm aiming where I think he's going to be by the time I'm loaded. And we drop it, and bam, hit him. So, yeah, we end up doing a little over 2,000 damage, so we got some blind damage in there. But, uh... You know, it, it was a bummer that I couldn't help our Moss when he was uh, over right over here. Now, because I lit this area up, all he had to kept doing is just backing up, backing up, backing up, backing up, backing up. And I could have dropped that round here, you know, and I, I probably could have actually dropped the round right about here. And the splash radius is this big area. So it would have done some splash damage to the uh, Tiger too, But... I wanted to get a direct hit on him so I could do a lot more damage. But unfortunately, the moss kept pushing forward into where I lit that area up, so I couldn't shoot to help him out. And then once he got taken out, the piece of dirt in the air floating. <laughs> but anyways, oh, there it is. Got a rock up here. It's a floating, it's a floating potato. Uh, but yeah, so anyways, when uh, he got taken out, unfortunately, he got taken out. And then I could drop my shell on the Tiger too, and we hit him for like 400 and something. But um, yeah, average damage, it says, is 1,200. And, you know, a direct hit on that Tiger too did 476. Like I said yesterday, you take what it says you can do, which is 1,200 average damage, cut it in two. Um, so we did almost 500. But, you know, I also think I hit him in the front, too. No, I, yeah, I can't remember now if I hit him in the front or the side when he was up here. Eh, anyways. But, yeah, you take that average damage that says 1,200. You're not going to do that. Not even close to it. Just cut it in half, and basically that's what you're going to do um, is about 600, 5 to 600 average damage when you get a direct hit on something. Um, I think they forgot to actually change that number when they uh, nerfed all the artilleries. Uh, no, because I think uh, the average damage used to be like 1,800, um, 18 or 1,900, something like that. And the T92 was like 2,200. I can't remember. It was way up there, just some crazy number. 
But yeah, if you want to hold on for a minute, I will have some uh, post-game stats for you, so I will be right back. Alrighty. So, uh, anyways, yesterday we did a review of the M44 American Tier 6 artillery. Uh, I've been, like I said, playing a lot of artillery recently, and I'm trying to get those Object 260 missions done. So... Uh, in this match, what is the biggest problem uh, you saw? Other than, yes, I was in an artillery. <laughs> so, as in, uh, the whole match, if you could change one thing about what was going on in the match, what would it be? And I actually typed it right in the match. I need targets. If you have an artillery that is loaded setting there and not shooting you're wasting uh, a valuable resource I know everybody hates artillery including me believe me I absolutely despise artillery I hate getting hit by artillery I hate being stunned by artillery but unfortunately it is part of the game and it will never leave the game I can almost guarantee it will never ever 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 with a few extra evers take artillery out of the game what they did to artillery in my mind uh if they wouldn't have done the stunning part of it it would have been phenomenal because basically it hits for crap now um i mean you're hitting direct targets and doing 400 damage with a artillery that supposedly can do what is this 11 1200 average damage it says so 1,200 average damage. Like I said yesterday, uh, yesterday in that review of the uh, M44, take that number and cut it in half. Uh, a lot of the targets I were hitting, and the uh, ones I killed, basically, if you want to be good at artillery, you have to put yourself in the shoes of the tank you're shooting at, like the AMX-50B and the Tiger II. Both those targets, when I shot and killed them, they were invisible and they were invisible for a few seconds but i put myself in the shoes of th those two tanks uh, those two at least and um kind of thought okay if i were in that tiger two if i were in that amx 50b what would i be doing right now where would i go and i basically took a blind shot and hit both of them and killed both of them uh the bat chat artillery he was just sitting there and didn't move once he was lit that was his mistake but if you can kind of put yourself in the shoes of the enemy vehicles that you're shooting at, what would you be doing if you were that vehicle? That can help you out immensely. Uh, I mean, just big time help you out. And this is still a little bit bright. I'm trying not to close this curtain thing all the way. It's about as good as it's going to get. But, uh, yeah, so if you can put yourself in the shoes of the enemy tanks that you're shooting at, it can help you out twofold because for one you can get shots off and destroy enemies that uh, normally would be like oh I'm safe here but if you you're thinking hey if I were in that tank would I go there or would I do that and then BAM you nail them and kill them they're like how the hell you know you just really gotta put yourself into you know positions that you would be do if you were in that tank getting shot at uh, artillery is mainly the old artillery before the nerf was you aim at one target and you decimate it. You hit a moss, a 3,000 hit point beast of a tank, and you, you aim right at that single tank. You, you pull that trigger and hit, it knocks 2,800 or 2,200 hit points off that one vehicle. But it didn't have any splash. Now you don't really want to aim at one vehicle you want to aim where there's a group of vehicles you want to stun and damage multiple vehicles with one shell what they did is they gave it a less penetrating round they only give you he rounds and uh they gave it a bigger uh like area um i'm drawing a blank here what's that called the um <laughs> i always do this uh Stun, well, uh, where am I looking at here? Why am I looking at that? I should be looking at this. Burst radius, there we are. So, like, the standard HE shells on this have a 12.8 burst radius. 
the premium shells have 14.2 so you can reach out an extra almost two uh, meters I mean it doesn't sound like a lot but it really is and you're talking about a circle of that extra not just a you know not just a line a little bit further out you're looking at a bigger like a like a, a big radius instead of doing 12 you're doing 14 but those shells are a lot more expensive and they don't do anything extra other than give you that bigger burst radius but the way they designed artillery now is you want to hit groups of vehicles you want to stun multiple vehicles um, I had one uh, what is that bombardier uh, award that's where here let's pull it up real quick you guys will get to see my fancy schmancy awards uh, awards so bombardier let me see if I can find it real quick the one that uh, shows um, where? Let's see if I can find the damn thing. Is it up here? Oh, there it is. Okay, <laughs> so a bombardier <clears throat> destroy at least two enemy vehicles with one shell. Uh, series of cheating all vehicles are added together. Can be obtained in random battles only. I have always wondered if you can get that in like a 4005 or a 183 if you destroy multiple vehicles with a tank or if it can be only an artillery. But I only had one of these awards. Only had one of those since the game's come out. And I just got another one a couple days ago. Actually, I, I'm going to see if I can find that uh, replay and I'll throw it in here so you can see it. Uh, clip where I knocked out because I think I actually was in this uh, artillery at that time. The gun conk. Um, I think I was in this... Uh, artillery when I got the bombardier but yeah it's made for doing hitting multiple targets now not a single target you do only maybe two or three hundred damage to each vehicle that you hit but you're hitting hopefully three four and five vehicles so you might hit a group of vehicles and do thirteen hundred damage sixteen hundred damage two thousand damage with one shell because it gives you such a big burst radius um, but the only thing I don't like about it is the stunning. It seems like if, like, uh, and this goes for both, even when I'm shooting at somebody, I, I feel actually bad for them. I really do. Especially if they're in, a, like, a Moss, um, uh, you know, on T-95, some big, slow tank destroyer or tank, because then they spend 90% of their game with their bloom this big, as big as the screen, and, you know, you're just stunned the whole time. It it decreases your load time it decreases your maneuverability uh your view range just everything and it really sucks and when you're a big slow moving vehicle like that and if there's multiple arties they're all shooting at you because you're almost a guaranteed hit they're gonna probably almost guaranteed do some damage and it just sucks when you're on the receiving end of that shell uh from you know three different artilleries and they just keep pounding you personally i wish they would knock it down to one arty per side that's all they need to have in the game one arty per side that's it none of this two none of this three one i think a lot of people would really uh come back to the game if they knocked it down to one artillery because that in itself is many of times i found myself rage quitting because of artillery being on the receiving end of getting hit time after time after time after time by three different artilleries and they just focus on you uh, one because they're either XVM shooting you because of your Unicom or a Super Unicom or two because you're in a Moss T95 something big slow and you know so you got all three shooting at you and it just ruins the gameplay for you so I think what they ought to do is knock it down to one artillery per side that's it and that's all they need to be honest with you that's it and I think if they had one arty per side, it would be a lot better for that one artillery player because then they got a multitude of targets, and they're not going to just focus one person out because they're going to be like, whoa, whoa, I got this guy over here. Oh, wait, 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 I got this guy over here. They're going to have more targets to shoot at because it's – I know it sounds funny, but when you've got three artilleries, a lot of times you'll see shell after shell hitting the same one, and you don't want to shoot at that one because uh, an artery round, artillery round might hit it, and kill it and here comes your rump and it hits the dirt and does nothing so but anyways uh let's go ahead and uh, do this uh part of it and uh call it call it a day so this was a master badge class three and a bruiser 
Uh, we hit the AMX 50B for 294. Knocked out his tracks and his gunner and finished him off. The uh, artillery there, we hit him for 175. An arty round hit him right before I did, I believe. Uh, basically, we decimated him. Knocked out his fuel tank, turret, commander, driver, loader, and finished him off. The Yag Tiger there, we hit him for 195. That was it, It's just barely even splashed him. Uh, knocked out his tracks, but after I hit him, he got just hammered by uh, friendlies, I believe. I think it was him. Uh, the Waffle PZ4, we hit him one time for 296 and knocked out his track, his radio operator, and his loader. And it looks like we must have hit him twice. Yeah, total damage hunter. Not caused by allies after I stunned him. So that does show him. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, I see. This is damage that was done by uh, friendlies after I had uh, stunned him. I always forget about that part of it. Uh, so anyways, the T-49, I just splashed him at the beginning. He was driving the exact same route. Exact same route, going around in circles, around in circles, around in circles. He come up that last time, and I only splashed him for 66, but I think he changed his little pattern after that. And we knocked out his track. Amex M449, Le Borte, we hit him for 432, and knocked out his track, and the Tiger too. We hit him for 557. And knocked out his track observation device, uh, destroyed his track, and knocked him out. And so we did three, four, five, six most damage in 2015. Got three kills on base experience of 775. So not anything to write home about. At 10 shots, three direct hits, eight splashes for 2015 damage. We just damaged seven, destroyed three. Total duration of our stuns was 138.82 seconds. Damage to how many vehicles that we stunned was 500, and I think I got to do like a, my friendly uh, tanks have to do. I believe it is a thousand. So I got to stun for 250 seconds, and the allies have to do a thousand hit points of damage. And that's the ones I don't like where you got to count on your team. That time we got at least half of it. Uh, stuns caused was eight, and distance travels was no big deal. I only lost 9,388 credits. Um, I run fuel and uh, food with this, or rations, or whatever you want to call it. Um, a lot of people ask why I run the fuel. Uh, it, well, it, it gives you engine power so you can scoot along quicker, and your turret traverse, well, this doesn't have a turret, but it seems to me that the uh, bloom shrinks in. Uh, it seems like it shrinks in faster. Maybe it's all in my head, but to me it seems like that uh, reticle shrinks in a lot quicker when I'm using the uh, fuel. Uh, but not just that, but you can get out of a sticky situation if you can move a lot quicker. So, not too bad. Only lost 9,000 credits. But, uh, yeah, anyways, if you like this uh, uh, artillery, man, I'm telling you, it's got a hell of a boomstick on it. And uh, it's well worth every penny if you're into artillery. Uh, like I said, I'm not into artillery, but uh, I need to do it so I can get these damn missions done. So... But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed that review. If you did, please click the like button down below and subscribe to the channel. You guys take it easy, be safe, and I will see you on the battlefield.